Vince Neal has been rocking countless cities and countless venues ever since he joined the infamous band Motley Crue back in 1981. While his performances recently have become somewhat lackluster, Vince used to be incredibly well known and recognizable because of his energy and electric performances, and of course, his signature blonde hair. However, things haven't always been so bright for the singer. Stick around to learn more. Before adopting his world famous stage name, Vince Neal, the Motley Crue frontman was born Vincent Neal Wharton on February 8th, 1961 in Southern California. As is the case with many rock stars, Vince Neal had a very rough childhood. Beginning from a very young age, his family moved around a lot. Vince was never in one place for too long. His family finally stopped moving around and set down their roots in Compton, California. This could have not been a worse fit for Vince, and he recalled all of his experiences in Compton in the Motley Crue memoir titled The Dirt. Growing up in a majority African-American community in Compton, Vince was constantly bullied and harassed due to his different skin tone. One instance in particular, Vince was on his way to the store to buy something for his mother when he was robbed and attacked, which left Vince in a very bad condition. Vince Neal was eventually kicked out of his school for disciplinary reasons and took to music as a way to cope with his bad situation. Vince Neal began his professional music career singing for a cover band called Rock Andy, and this is where he was discovered by future bandmates Nikki Six, Tommy Lee, and Mick Mars. After he was recruited by Motley Crue, the years of hell raising began. From 1981 through 1984, Vince Neil and his band enjoyed tons of success, selling tons of copies of their album, Shout at the Devil, which quite literally drove their partying out of control. As in 1984, while Motley Crue was on tour with the Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne, Vince Neal decided to host a party in his mansion at Redondo Beach. Neal and Hanoi Rocks drummer Nicholas Dingley, otherwise known as Razzle, went on a booze run in Vince Neal's 1972 Di Tommaso Pantera. However, this trip would prove tragic. As intoxicated and distracted, Vince Neal lost control of his vehicle and slammed into an oncoming vehicle head on. The passengers in the other car were critically injured with lifelong injuries, and Razzle passed away as a result of the crash, while Vince Neal escaped with only minor injuries. Neal was convicted of drunk driving and vehicular manslaughter and was sentenced to 30 days in prison and $2 million in fines, which adjusted for inflation would be around $6 million in today's money. While Vince Neal paid his fines and only served 15 days in jail, Many rock fans and musicians alike thought Vince Neil got off way too easy for the severity of his charges. Don Dockin spoke out about this in a recent podcast. Check out our previous video on that for more information. This was a tragic event, not only in Neil's life, but also in rock history, and things would keep spiraling out of control for the Motley Crue frontman after this tragic crash. Don Dockin also called out Vince Neil for plastic surgeries the singer has undergone in an effort to enhance his appearance. Vince Neil has undergone several plastic surgery procedures over the years. The rock star has been open about his experiences with cosmetic enhancements, and his transformations have always been a topic of public interest. One of the most notable plastic surgery procedures Vince Neil underwent was a facelift, this procedure is designed to reduce sagging skin and wrinkles, giving the face a more youthful appearance. Additionally, he has also been reported to have a nose job or a rhinoplasty to alter the shape and size of his nose. Don Dakin was not very kind to Vince, saying Neil should have just tried to lose weight instead of get surgeries to fix his appearance. Many rock fans agree, and this brought the public image of Vince Neil downward. Directly after Motley Crue released their top-selling album, titled Dr. Feelgood, tensions began rising between Vince Neil and his bandmates. Neil was fired from Motley Crue in 1992 for the reason, according to the band's book, The Dirt, being that Vince Neil was more interested in driving race cars than helping the band perform and make music. Personal conflicts also played a role in the tensions and eventual firing of Vince Neil. Vince Neil and Nikki Six, in particular, had a long-standing feud that stemmed from a variety of factors, 
including their different personalities and creative visions. For example, Six was known for his more serious and introspective approach to songwriting, while Neil was more focused on partying and having fun. These differences often led to disagreements and tensions during the recording process. Vince Neil tried to pursue a solo career, which was more or less a flop and his first solo album sold only 300,000 copies, just about as many as Motley Crue's new album they released with replacement singer John Karabi. Wow, talk about Motley Crue needing Vince Neil and him needing Motley Crue, right? Tragedy continued to follow Vince Neil into 1995 as he continued to spiral downhill with his alcohol addiction. Something downright horrible happened. His daughter Skylar, who had been battling cancer for a while, suddenly passed away. This would prove to be the lowest point in Neil's life, and we can't blame him. The pain of losing a daughter is too much to put into words. Vince Neil continued to abuse alcohol and drugs more than he had ever done before his daughter's tragic passing. And after finally checking himself into rehab, he rejoined his old band, Motley Crue. Vince Neil's long history of divorces adds to his tragic past even further. Vince Neil's first marriage was to Beth Lynn in 1981. The couple had one daughter named Elizabeth Ashley Wharton. However, their marriage ended in divorce in 1985. Neil then married Cherise Rudell in 1987. They had one daughter named Skylar, who as we just discussed, tragically passed away after the couple was divorced in 1993. In 2000, Neil married Heidi Mark, a model and actress known for her appearance in Playboy magazine. However, their marriage ended in divorce in 2001. Last but not least, in Vince Neil's Life of Lost Love is Leah Gerardini, who he married in 2005, but they eventually divorced in 2010. Last up on our list is Vince Neil's horrible business ventures outside of his music career. In the early 2000s, Neil launched a tattoo parlor called Vince Neil Inc to pass along his love of tattoos. However, the venture was not successful and the company filed for bankruptcy in 2004 after being open just four years. Lasting even less time, in 2010, Neil opened a nightclub in Las Vegas called Tattoos and Tequila. However, the club struggled to attract customers and closed down just after a few months. Last stop in Vince Neil's bad businesses was in 2012 he opened up a chain of craft beer bars called Vince Neal's Tap House. However, the chain closed down after only a few locations were opened. Clearly, Vince Neal should have stuck with music, which is what he is good at. However, these failures just add to the tragedy of his life. It seems a common theme among rock stars is to have to deal with tragedy just like everyone else, and it would seem Vince Neal suffered more than most. Whether self-inflicted, like the car accident, or just straight up tragic like the passing of his daughter, Neil has been through a lot. Our official merch store is live. Take a second to check out these awesome designs. Both Rock Now branded clothing and products as well as some of our other cool designs. With the holidays approaching, these products will make a great gift for you and your rock and roll loving friends and family. Click on the link in the description or check out the shop shelf under the video. What are your thoughts on Motley Crue Frontmen? Let us know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and thanks for watching.